This woman sold her baby to six predators who viciously abused her and then ended that baby's life, possibly with a baseball bat. I just got this story because I was tagging it to the paranormal file. Tag below, go follow this person. Gosh, amazing hair. But underneath that hair is a heart of gold. This woman, this monster, um, possibly will get the, uh, the D penalty. They might end her because she sold her baby to predators who used and abused her. This is the baby. And it might be more than just six people that used this baby. That baby was innocent. That baby knew no evil except for that baby's mother. The mother was a drug addict and sold the baby for drug money. What do you guys think about this? And go follow the Paranormal Files. I think we all can agree that Harambe getting turned into a screensaver has done irreversible damage to our timeline. But let's talk about the gorilla before Harambe because this happened before except it had a very different ending. So this was actually 30 years before Harambe became a hashtag in 1986. Five-year-old Levin Merritt was visiting the Jersey Zoo, which actually isn't in New Jersey, with his family. When he tried leaning over to get a better look and instead airdropped himself 20 feet straight into the gorilla pen. It really always is gorillas, ain't it? You never hear about this happening with chimps. There's probably a good reason for that. Levin broke his arm, cracked his skull, and knocked himself out cold. But worst of all, when he woke up, it was to a 400-pound silverback looming over him, and everyone watching thought the kid was about to get put back to sleep permanently. Instead, what they actually saw was 25-year-old Jumbo standing over the boy, gently stroking his back with his hand, and even keeping the other curious gorillas away from him. And when the kid started screaming, because honestly, who wouldn't? Jumbo took charge and led all the others away from the boy into a small hut in their enclosure, which is when paramedics were able to retrieve the boy. And the funny thing is, Jumbo's actions might have saved more than just the little boy. Back then, King Kong was to gorillas what Jaws did to sharks, and the general public wasn't rocking with gorillas. But seeing a 400-pound unit protecting a human child, it was like Jumbo hit everyone with the Uno reverse, and it helped change public perception of gorillas. As for Levin, that day and Jumbo changed his life forever, and he still has the toy gorilla the zoo gave him. And as for gentle giant Jumbo, he passed tense in 92, but all that really means is he was there to welcome Harambe 24 years later, the more you know. Creepy facts that will give 99% of you chills, part two. More people die every year from taking selfies than are killed in shark attacks. So next time you are taking a selfie, be aware of your surroundings and be careful. Refrigerator doors are magnetic because children used to die inside them. While playing hide and seek, these older model refrigerators could only be opened from the outside. So when the children hid in them and shut the door, there was no way of them getting out and they died. The reason why dogs love squeaky toys so much, because it triggers an ancestral instinct that reminds them of a whimpering prey. So next time you see your dog chewing on a squeaky toy, it actually thinks it's chewing on a dying animal crying for its life. People who spend more than two hours a day in front of a screen actually make their lives 1.4 years shorter. So I think some of us have to get off our phones for a little bit. It is now being reported that one of the largest data leaks ever discovered has occurred. So here's how to check if you've been affected. Yesterday, researchers found that a massive 26 billion personal records had been exposed in what they called the mother of all breaches. With Zuck commenting, <laughs> rookie numbers. This is the list of the companies affected, which include the likes of Twitter, LinkedIn, Dropbox, MyFitnessPal, Adobe, Canva, and the list goes on. The researchers claim that this breach is extremely dangerous and could prompt a tsunami of cybercrime, including identity theft and unauthorized access to your personal and sensitive accounts. Now, regardless if you care about any of these accounts listed, usernames and password combinations were found in the leak. So if you're using the same ones elsewhere, you are being advised to change them and use two-factor authentication. Normal looking Photos that have a disturbing backstory, part 21. This is known as the pale blue dot. This picture is a Voyager 1 photo, and the blue dot is Earth. On that tiny dot is everyone you've ever loved, and every person that's ever lived. This photo was taken of Regina K by her killer. He was a truck driver who would pick up prostitutes, runaways, and hitchhikers, and he would rape, torture, and sometimes kill them. While this appears to be an ordinary group of friends having fun, it is actually a group of Nazi concentration camp officers at Auschwitz. The man on the left is Edmund Kemper, a 6'9 serial killer who murdered over 10 people. The man on the right is interviewing him. 
After the interview was finished, he clicked the panic button under the desk, but the guards didn't respond. Kemper noticed his panic and said, If I wanted, I could screw your head off and place it on the table to greet the guards. They entered the room 30 minutes later. My Barbie is 300 years old, and she's alive. Every toy on the planet is alive. Your toys are sleeping and they can awake at any moment. Look at your toys in the eyes and tell me if it blinks. Do you know what would happen if the Earth lost oxygen for five seconds? Now, most humans and animals can hold their breath for that long, so initially your body probably wouldn't even notice, but you would notice it when the sky goes completely black due to the atmosphere having no oxygen to scatter the rays of light from the sun. Any form of transportation that relies on combustion would immediately stop working, causing planes to fall from the sky and millions of cars to stop working. The ozone layer would also be gone, causing everyone and everything to start the cooking process. While that's happening, your eardrums would also explode due to the change in atmospheric pressure, anything made out of concrete, including buildings, bridges, and dams, would immediately collapse. And since the Earth's crust is made out of 45% oxygen, it would also completely collapse, and everyone and everything would immediately start falling towards the center. This case is gonna give you chills. Welcome to Creep Time on TikTok with Silas Dean. This story is from a man named Grady Hendrix about his childhood back in the 80s. So his parents had moved into this house around May of 1981. He's like any other nine-year-old kid. He realizes he can sneak down downstairs in the middle of the night and grab anything he wants from the kitchen without his parents finding out. Until one night, while he's sneaking down in the dark, he hears something that makes him freeze. The sound of a fork hitting a counter in the kitchen. From the hallway, he can see the outline of a tall, thin man who had been eating at the kitchen counter. He races upstairs and he gets his parents up from their sleep, but of course by the time they go downstairs, there's nothing. But over the next couple of months, there's odd instances of strange noises in the house, there's things being misplaced in the kitchen. Over that summer, while he's Lying awake in bed, he hears movements coming from the ceiling above him, so he flips over on his back. He recounts seeing a pair of eyes staring back at him from the ceiling vent. He becomes hysterical. His parents get up, they have to search the attic, they search all the crawl spaces, but still, they're not finding anything. They just keep assuming that he's freaked himself out. But by the end of that summer, an HVAC inspector comes to the house and finds something horrific. The rotting remains of a dead man who had crawled into their vent system and was living in their water. Walls. I can't think of anything more chilling than that, but of course what this meant was that everything Grady had seen was real. Since I've heard this story, I, I can't look at the vents in my house. I'm so freaked out. Creepy photos that can't be explained. This photo was taken in the basement of a house that was for sale a few years ago. The photo was taken by a realtor because he wanted to show his clients the house. Everything looks completely normal in this house, until you look at the left corner. What appears to be a fairly transparent woman is standing towards the bottom of the stairs going to the basement. The realtor insists that nobody was there when he took the photo, but the strangest part about this photo lies in the backstory of this house. The house was previously owned by a man and his wife, but unfortunately the wife passed away so the husband decided to sell. Another reason why the man wanted to sell his house is because after his wife passed, he kept hearing strange noises in the middle of the night while home alone. What do you guys think? Who or what was captured on camera? Like and follow. Videos that can never be explained. A police body cam captures Lady vanishing out of nowhere. Hey, how's it going? I'm speeding, wasn't I? Yeah, and you completely blew past that stop sign in front of me. I'm, I'm so sorry, I okay. literally didn't even see it. No this is my first time being pulled over. Alright, can I see your driver's license registration, please? Yeah. Um, not a big deal. Here's my license, but uh, this is my mom's car, so... Where are you headed to where you're speeding and missing stop signs? I was just headed to a friend's house. It's like, literally right there. It's a, okay. a birthday party. So, Got it. Not, not mine, but... Any drugs or alcohol in the vehicle? No, of course not. Alright. Sit tight, sir. I'll be right back. Okay. Your registration is expired. Where did she what go? The... Sarah? What the heck? Sarah? 3201. To dispatch. Hi.
Animal facts that'll make you see the world a little differently. The only reason tigers are orange is because the animals on their grocery list are Helen Keller to the color. So if you're something like a deer, this is what the biggest cat in the world and a striped uber to the afterlife looks like. Polar bears have black skin. The only reason they look white is because their fur is translucent and hollow. And with hollow hair, light bounces off of them and reflects enough to look like an aggressive piece of snowdrift. Flamingos aren't naturally pink. The color comes from the carotenoid pigments in the shrimp and algae they eat. If they didn't eat it, they'd look like an Ikea kitchen, just 50 shades of bland. And if you move like Bugs Bunny and start ODing on carrots, the same thing can happen to you, but instead of pink, you turn a shade of orange. If you think an orca's eyes are here, you fall for their trap card. It's actually right there. The giant white patches are false eyes to trick any prey that tries to fight back. That's just devious. This is a black bear. Let me explain. This is a black bear with a mutation called Lucism that basically turns it into a shiny Pokemon. Matter of fact, all three of these are black bears, and I can't even be mad. I'm black and I'm proud, but I'm black and I'm brown, at least according to Crayola. Bulls hating the color red is a myth. Mostly because bulls can't even see the color red. But chickens do, and because their instinct is to attack the color red, you're more likely to get pressed by a pack of poultry if you cosplay as the Kool-Aid Man. The more you know. Three scary facts about dreams. One. If you are dreaming and some weird creature appears in your dream, there is someone watching you. 2. If you are unable to fall asleep that means you are awake in someone else's dream. 3. 90% of your dream are actually traumas. In 1995, 13-year-old Thad Phillips was sleeping when someone picked Phillips up off the couch. He assumed it was his father carrying him to bed. Thad soon found he was outside with an unfamiliar, friendly, older teen boy named Joe Clark. Joe took Thad to his home, saying he needed some help with his car and that some other boys were coming over for a party. But once they got into Joe's house, Joe's friendly teen persona disappeared. He threw Thad on his bed and started jumping on him, and then began to twist Thad's foot around his leg until the bone above his ankle snapped and splintered. For the next 43 hours, Thad would endure horrific torture, with many bones broken, including his knees. His ankles broken so bad that his feet were backwards. Thad asked Joe why he was doing this, and Joe said, I enjoy the sound and the feeling of bones breaking. I've done this before, and I love it. It was later discovered that he had abducted and tortured Christian Steiner, that had initially thought to have drowned in the nearby river. Horror movies based on true events. Strangers. Why is Jesus never taken seriously in Hollywood? Like, why is he mocked almost everywhere? We got Jesus getting a lap dance on SNL. Megan Thee Stallion dressed as a demon. P. Diddy on a cross. Tupac on a cross. Madonna on a cross. Nas on a cross. The baby on a cross. Even Lil Dicky on a cross. We got Lady Gaga in a nun outfit with an upside down cross. Katy Perry pretending to be burning with a demon behind her. And an upside down cross. Look, what I'm trying to say is how did being demonic become so cool and popular? Have we lost our way that much? This is demonic. They're not even hiding the fact that they are the devil. This is a satanic dance ritual. Somehow this is meant to be the entertainment stage for our youth, for the world. This is promoting the pathway to hell. Like a lot of us are just sitting here shrugging it off. Like it's no big deal. But that isn't weird to you that we have normalized it that much? Whew. We have lost our way from God. If you still believe in good and still believe in God, comment amen down below. Because at this point, I'm afraid of what we'll start normalizing next. Make sure to hit that follow button because my next story will blow your mind. I don't think this was a picture that many people were supposed to see. When these things leak, we typically talk about them. This was the photo that I wanted to talk about, and unlike some of them, for this one, I could pretty much spot straight away what was wrong with the picture. Again, this was a picture that nobody was ever supposed to see. We know it took place somewhere in the suburban neighborhood, like quiet town, entire family vanished without a trace, but they searched the phones because those were oddly enough left behind. On the phone of the mother, this was a picture that was found, and I'll tell you why it's so strange. Before we do, as always, if you have not listened to Creep Time the podcast, go click the link in my bio to listen on Spotify, or Apple. Like I said, this picture taken by the mother, right? If you look to the back, who is that in this room? According to this file that leaked, this was a family of all boys, a husband, and the mother. Who is this unexplained woman that's in their house? Nothing in their file to explain this person.
In 2007, ABC News did a segment on death threats and the investigated families who had experienced that. Little did they know that this series was about to take a terrifying turn. One of the families they investigated claimed that they would receive calls late at night from a man with a scratchy voice. He threatened to unalive them, their parents, their pets, basically anyone that was related to the family. What terrifies me is the caller even knew what the family was wearing at the time of them receiving the call. Police tried to trace the phone numbers, however, it would always be traced back to the people's phones. And during the segment, police actually found out that the person giving the death threats was actually a hacker and he was in their phone. He was tracking their location, what they were seeing and hearing, basically everything. They never found out who it was, and that truly goes to show that you never know who is listening. How to tell if a zodiac sign likes you? Virgo. They're shy, but if you like them back, they won't shut up. Aries, they're always glancing at you. Pisces, ask you a lot of questions and tries to make you smile. Gemini, how don't you tell is the real question. Capricorn, they show off so freaking much. Scorpio, they're always staring at you when you're not looking. Let's talk about another South Asian serial killer who claimed a whopping 100 lives. Javed Iqbal was a Pakistani serial killer who confessed to the murder and sexual abuse of 100 boys ages ranging from 6 to 16. When his father died in 1993, Javed inherited 3 million rupees. He used the money to open different businesses designed to meet young boys and teenagers. He'd lure his victims by leaving money on the floor of his video game arcade. Whenever a child would pick up the money, he would accuse them of theft and take them to a room where he he would sexually assault them as their punishment for stealing. Javed also met other victims through pen pal programs. He'd convince them to send photos of themselves, select his favorites, and then he'd send them gifts. After that, he'd arrange to meet them and sexually assault them. He'd abduct his victims, assault them, and then strangle them to death. He'd then dismember the corpses of his victims and submerge them in vats of hydrochloric acid. After the bodies liquefied, he'd dump everything into a nearby river. In 1998, Javed and an employee were robbed and beaten by another employee. He suffered a severe head injury and was hospitalized for 22 days. Right after that, he was arrested and charged with sexual assault. Somehow, he was granted bail and most of his property was sold to cover his medical care. He moved out to the slums of Lahore where he would commit more heinous crimes. In 1999, Javed wrote a letter to the police and a local Lahore newspaper where he confessed to the murder of 100 boys. When the police got to his home, they were met with bloodstains, vats of acid, Acid containing partially dissolved bodies and plastic bags containing the clothes and shoes of his victims. Note cards with details and photos of his victims were also found, but Javed was gone. The police also found out he'd been sharing his home with three teenage boys who were believed to be his accomplices. On December 30th, 1999, Javed gave himself up. However, when it came time for him to stand trial, he denied any involvement in the killings. He claimed he confessed to the murders to draw attention to the dangers children living in poverty experience. Thankfully, the judge didn't believe him and he was sentenced to death by strangulation in the same public square he frequented when searching for victims. His body was also to be cut into a hundred pieces and dissolved in acid. His three accomplices were also found guilty. However, on October 8th, 2001, he and one of his accomplices were found dead in their cell. It seems like they had committed suicide. However, there's speculation that they were murdered because autopsies revealed that they were beaten prior to their death. Javed's motive for the 
these murders was his rage over a perceived injustice committed by the Lahore police. They beat him after arresting him on charges of sexual assault against a young runaway boy in the 1990s. Since his mother was forced to watch his decline due to these injuries before suffering a fatal heart attack while he was still incarcerated, he vowed to make a hundred mothers cry for their sons just as she had cried for him. Javed bragged to authorities that he could have easily killed 500 or more children. He stopped at 100 because that's what he promised himself.